On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and I think I just found it. Welcome to KWTV 0018 Live at Facts. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the droids you are looking for. I hope you enjoy this episode, this very special and spectacular episode. I'm completely surrounded by them. This is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to KWTV. Thank you, R2 Builders, for giving us this great intro. And these are the droids you're looking for. by Imperial forces at the um, Fan Wars garrison, the 501st Fan War garrison, which is uh, the French-speaking uh, Belgian Star Wars fan club, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's a costume fan club. Um, one of the things, I've got a uh, Imperial Stormtrooper right next to me, and one of the things that you immediately see is that these costumes are absolutely perfect. Are these official costumes or uh, in fact, we have some uh, rules to follow. So to get our number from the, the 500, 501st, we have to respect some rules. And this rule is to have a perfect, accurate costume. A perfect, accurate costume. I'm looking at a full body suit, white boots, uh, plastic legging, stormtrooper shielding. And this is, this is pretty decent stuff with the black body suit underneath. Um, to the person inside, if you can talk through that helmet, how hot is it in there? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's pretty hot. It's the heavy, uh, all the heavy costumes are pretty hot, like the, the Imperial Stormtroopers, the clones, the Imperial Guards, all those ones with helmets, they're just uh, lacking of breath in okay. their helmets. Um, how, how does the inside of one of those helmets look? Are they comfortable or are they really just costume helmets? Um, they're pretty comfortable. In fact, many troopers modif uh, yeah, they modified their helmets to, to fit correctly in, in the, on the head. And these are um, costumes you can buy online or is there an official store? Or There are some official sources but most of them uh, just uh, modify them. Okay. So the, the, most of the, the, the work is done by, the, by themselves. Well, thank you very much. Uh, one final question. How much does it cost? It depends. Um, if you have some trooper, it's around 1,000 euro. Imperial officer is 300. Uh, if you got the, the, the most, it's Dark Vader around, it might, it might go to 8,000 8, euro. 8,000 euros for a for a Darth Vader costume? Yeah, for a full accurate Darth Vader costume with helmets, with all the, the parts perfectly accurate, it might go to, to 8,000 euro. And these are bought by the fans themselves? Um, it depends on. Some pieces are built by some guys in Germany or in the United States, but you have, sometimes you have to, to do it yourself or to go to uh, someone who can work tissues and so. Okay, well, guys, I wish you all the luck. I just want to say you have an impressive lineup. How many costumes do you have walking the floor here today? Uh, I don't know for all the clubs, but here for the 501st, we are around uh, 130 costumes from five different countries. Okay, thank you very much and good luck. You're welcome. I'm here uh, at the Facts Belgium with two lovely ladies who are, I think, all that's left of the Dharma Initiative. Yes. You know, uh, and you can say this, what happened in season four? In season four? Um, um, the freighter blew up and Jen presumably died. 
Are you big? Of course, you're big Lost fans. But why? Why the Dharma Initiative? Well, because we wanted to dress up, and Lost is our biggest love of everything, of anything geeky. So we wanted to honor the final season of Lost because it ended. Um, one of the hardest questions: Were the Dharma people the good guys or the bad guys? Eventually, they were. The good guys or the bad guys? The good guys. The good guys. And today they are represented by two lovely ladies. Did it take a lot of work to make your costumes? Not that much. I think it took a. Oh, you. Oh, yeah. They. They are both from the motor pool. Are you here with a V. With a VW uh, little van? Sadly, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we wish we were, but no. no. Will uh, Will there ever be a sequel to Lost, or would you want there to be a sequel to Lost? I think it ended perfectly. Of course, I'd want another episode or a few episodes, but I think it ended very well, so I'm satisfied. Okay, thank you, ladies, for your time. Enjoy your day. Okay, I am here in the most exciting booth of the entire convention. I am surrounded by walking, talking, moving, completely one-on-one -on -one replicas of R2 units. The R2D2 Builder Clubs makes the rest of the show floor boring. How do you do this? Where do you start moving or where do you start building an R2? The first thing you have to do is just go to the website. Go to astromech.net, visit the Yahoo group R2 Builders. You can download all the drawings for free and you can start building your own R2-D2 right now if you want. Are these made out of wood or out of plastic? Um, these are made from all kinds of materials. They come from cardboard, metal, uh, wood. You can name it. If you can get your hands on it, you can build an R2 with it. Are there official plans? Yes, we have official plans. We have a guideline uh, with a packet of plans that uh, if somebody makes parts, uh, from these drawings they are 100% sure they will fit on the R2. If other people build parts and they give you the parts, you are 100% sure that the parts will fit on your R2. So there is kind of like an, an, an Astromech standard out there that says yes. if, build, if you're building parts, this is how you have to do it. Well, it's not you have to do it like this, but this is just a right way to do it. We have so much knowledge, we have more than 6,000 members worldwide with so many much knowledge and with all that knowledge from all the people you can build your own R2. Not every R2 is the same. They look outwardly the same but the innards are completely different from every R2. One of the things that, are, are you using original George Lucas material sketches or is this really another brilliant uh, angle that fans have found? Uh, both. We have clo very close contact with the original builder of uh, the R2-D2, Don Bees. Um, he has supplied us with information and system drawings and measurements that from that we created like one big drawing package that you can use to build your own droids. Um, how much does one of these babies approximately weigh? Uh, weigh? Uh, in kilograms, that depends on um, if you buy a very cheap version, a very lightweight plastic version, maybe 30, 20 kilograms, the aluminium can maybe up, go up to like 70 or 80 kilograms. What's the average cost of building your own R2? <laughs> Just, you know, if people say like, I've got some money to spend, I want to build my own Astromag. Yeah, ballpark figure about 500 euros to 6,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. If you want to have gold plated, you're going to go even further. You can cover it in diamonds if you want you can just go all out if you want how uh, one one final question R2 is like this big he has no arms no legs and speaks absolutely no understandable dialogue why is he so uh, popular um, it's the design it's a timeless design it's a part of Star Wars Star Wars is just an epic movie is just made the design from the Star Wars movies is really great and it's just it's an icon from the Star Wars movie it's the design that for me is personally the best thing about R2
One question I ask every Star Wars fan. George is going to do it in 3D. Should he or shouldn't he? Uh, why not? He's make some more money than do it in 3D. Do the old version in 3D. Make the extra versions. Make the extra, extra, extra version. And he keeps on going collecting money for the years to come. So we're going to be happy. It's going to be Star Wars all the way. So, we're so, so, happy. so you guys are going to build an R through 3D? Um, you're looking at it. <laughs> we were the first. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, I am uh, surrounded by three Imperial officers, of which one is a Hoth snow trooper and two Imperial commanders. And if I'm not mistaken, an Imperial gunner? No, it's a Navy trooper. It's an Imperial Navy trooper. Now, what has always fascinated me is the beautiful uniforms. Um, I'm first going to ask the officers and then I'm going to get to the runs. Um, do you make them yourselves or is this custom made or do you buy this? I, I got it uh, from, from a friend. And uh, she has uh, no um, one that uh, she's done on herself, but this one was a um, bought one, and she gave it to me, so now I am an Imperial officer. It suits you very well, and then we have the Imperial Navy. How hard is the helmet to wear? Um, well, it's uh, very hard because it's not fitting right. I have to um, extend the, the strips here a bit and custom, customize a, a little bit on the, on the helmet. But um, everything else is bought from the internet or um, over um, other... One, one of the things that I've always wanted to know, and I don't know if you can give me an answer, why did they need to wear their helmets inside the Death Star? <laughs> hmm. Low ceiling? No, low ceiling. <laughs> yes, Just probably. to look good. <laughs> and then we have an Imperial uh, Snowtrooper from uh, Return of the, uh, sorry, not Return of the Jedi, of The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Complete with a tire helmet, which has to be amazingly hot. In here it is hot because there are too many people and it's like no oxygen here. <laughs> now the costume actually exists out of boots, white pants, white top and shielding basically that fits around it. How long does it take to, uh, to put it on? Mm, around 20 minutes, long as it um, takes me the shoes, to put the shoes on. Okay. And this is also a kit you can buy from the internet, or is this stuff that you make yourself? Um, the, all the plastic you can buy. Um, the shoes, they are um, from Norway. And um, I, I did the um, dust on myself. And the pants you can buy. They're just um, normal paint pants, like for people who paint. <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing. I know you shouldn't ask, but I think that we have a lot of listeners out uh, we do a podcast, the Nightcast podcast. We have a lot of listeners who are just dying to get their own outfit. How much does this cost? Uh, that's that's different. You can you can buy a costume for three hundred bucks or like three hundred euro, or if you um, yeah it goes up to eight hundred euro for a really good um, stormtrooper. Or if you buy a Vader, you can spend three thousand euro. Three thousand euros. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have a, you do have a perfect costume. <laughs> are they custom fit or are they the same thing clothed with basically shells on top? Yeah, yeah basically this, yeah. So Princess Leia was right when she said you have to be a certain size to be a stormtrooper. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, I want to thank you guys very much. Uh, one more question. Uh, where are you guys from? You are here in Belgium today? We are from Germany. Okay. German garrison, 500 first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun with German garrisons yeah. here, so we welcome you. <laughs> okay, thank you.